Assalamu alaikum I hope you are all fine and doing well and I welcome back to all of you in 888 microprocessor and ISA bus chapter number 9 the part 3 of this video lecture series so move forward the hadith of the day is At-Tahuru Shatrul Iman Paki Adha Iman Hai and come to the flow of the lecture which we are following we are studying about the 8088 microprocessor hardware description its pin description and specifications and the working of the pins and the subtopics up till now which we have covered the microprocessor buses and the pins that are responsible for the working of the data bus address bus and control bus in 8088 microprocessor and in today's lecture inshallah we will uh, try to cover these two topics the bus timing in 8088 microprocessor and the remaining pins of the 8088 microprocessor so let's start bus timing in 8088 microprocessor the 8088 uses the four clocks for memory and input output bus activities for example in the read timing ALE latches the address in the first clock cycle here you can see in the diagram the clock signal consists of four clock cycles named T1 T2 T3 and T4 and in the first clock cycle T1 microprocessor 8088 provides active high ALE signal to the 74 LS373 latch and AD0 to AD7 which is multiplexed address data bus will be treated as the address bus and the remaining address bits a8 to a19 also starts latching and in the second clock cycle the latching of the address completes and the 20 bit address is available on the address bus to fetch the data from the target location In the second and third clock cycles, the read signal is provided. Again, in the diagram, in the time T2 and T3, the memory read signal, which is active low signal, is provided by the 8088 microprocessor. And during this memory read cycle, the process of fetching the data is completed up to the fourth clock cycle T4. Finally, by the end of the fourth clock cycle, the data must be at the pins of the CPU to be fetched in. Here you can see in the diagram when the memory read signal provided by the CPU then after some floating time the data is available on the data bus after fetching and the floating time is the time in which the memory locates the data from the given 20 bit address You have noticed that the entire read or write cycle time is only 4 clock cycles. If the task of the reading or writing takes more than 4 clock cycles due to the slowness of the memory or the input output devices, the wait state can be represent can be requested from the CPU now we will move forward and uh, 
from this now we are going to discuss the remaining pins of the microprocessor so up till now we have discussed the pin number 1 pin number 20 and the function of pin number 40 these three pins are for the purpose of the biasing 1 and 20 for the ground signal and pin number 40 for the VCC signal and we have already studied about the from pin number 9 to 16 which are multiplex address data pins and from 2 to 8 which are remaining address pins and from 35 to 39 which are also the address pins and uh, after that we have studied some of the control pins we will discuss them again in these lectures so move forward the first pin which we are going to discuss is the interrupt acknowledgement pin INTA so in the diagram you can see that the pin number 24 is the interrupt acknowledgement the bar on the pin indicates that it is the active low active low means it works for the low voltages so it is an active low output signal it is the pin work as the output pin it informs the interrupt controller that an interrupt request has occurred and that the vector number is available on the lower eight lines of the data bus so when we discuss about the interrupt then we will talk about the interrupt controller and uh, interrupt request and the vector number of that particular interrupt the next pin is the ALE which is the pin number 25 is the address latch enable it is active high and output signal it indicates that a valid address is available on the external data bus so it will uh, used for the separation of the multiplex address and data bus as the address bus the next pin is the pin number 26 which is data enable pin so DEN it is an active low because the bar on the pin and output signal it enables the 74 LS 245 this is uh, this allows isolation of the CPU from the system bus so 74 LS 245 uh, will be discussed when we were talking about the system bus and the local bus the next pin is the DT slash R which is the pin number 27 so it is the data transmit and receive pin it is an active low pin active low for the receiving mode and active high for the transmission mode so active low output signal used to control the direction of the data flow through the 74LS 245 transceiver the next pin is IO slash M which is the pin number 28 which is input output uh, input and output of the memory so it indicates whether the address bus is accessing the memory or an IO devices in the 8088 it is low when accessing memory and high when accessing the input output this pin is used along with the RD pin WR pin to generate the four control signals memory read memory write input output read and input output write signal the next pin is the WR which is the write pin pin number 25 of the IC so the bar on the WR indicates that it is active low output signal it indicates that the data on the data bus is being returned to memory or an IO devices it used along with the signal IO slash M which is a pin number 28 to generate the memory write or IO write control signals for the write operations the next pin is HLDA hold acknowledgement pin and it is the pin number 30 of the IC it is active high pin and output signal after input on the hold pin 
the CPU responds with this HLDA pin to signal that the DMA controller can use the buses. The DMA means direct memory access. We will study the DMA controller when we study the memory interfacing. The next pin is hold pin HOLD which is the pin number 31. It is also active high and input pin and it is an input from the DMA controller that indicates that the device is requesting access to memory and IO space and that the CPU should release control of the local bus. The next pin is read pin RD slash which is the pin number 32. The bar on the pin indicates that it is active low output signal and it also indicates that the data is being read from the memory or the IO to the CPU. Use along with the signal IO slash M to generate the memory read or IO read control signal for the read operations. The other pins of the 8088 microprocessor are described below. The MN slash MX which is the minimum or maximum mode selection pin and it is the pin number 33 of the IC. For the minimum mode we will connect the minimum slash maximum pin which is the pin number 33 directly to the plus 5 volt and for the selection of the maximum mode we will ground this pin. The next pin is the NMI which is the non maskable interrupt pin and it is the pin number 17 of the 888 microprocessor. This is an edge triggered going from low to high. <coughs> edge triggered means it works for the changing of the edges not for the levels. So it is more sensitive and it is the type of the edge triggered going from low to high means it is the positive edge triggered input signal to the processor that will make the microprocessor jump to the interrupt vector table after it finishes the current instruction. This interrupt cannot be masked by the softwares. We will see this more detail in chapter number 14. The next pin is the interrupt request pin which is the pin number 18 and interrupt request is an active high level triggered input pin that is continuously monitored by the microprocessor for an external interrupt. This pin and interrupt acknowledgement are connected to the 8259 interrupt controller chip as we will see in chapter number 14 which is related to the interrupt handling of the microprocessor. The next pin is the clock pin. CLK pin number 19 of the IC. So microprocessor requires a very accurate clock for the synchronization of the events and driving the CPU. For this reason Intel has designed the 8284 clock generator to be used with the 8088 microprocessor. Clock is an input and is connected to the 8284 clock generator IC. It acts as the heartbeat of the CPU. Any irregularity causes the CPU to malfunction. The 8284 chip is used whether the 8088 is connected in minimum mode or in the maximum mode. The details of the 8284 chip are covered in the next section. Some of the remaining pins are the ready pin which is the pin number 22 of the IC. Ready is an input signal used to insert a wait state for slower memories and IO devices for the purpose of synchronization. So wait state is required when the we are dealing with the slower memories or IO devices. It inserts the wait states when it is low. The ready signal is needed to interface the CPU 
to low speed memories and IO devices. The next pin is pin number 23 which is the test pin and it is the active low. So in minimum mode this is not used in maximum mode however this is an input from the 8087 math coprocessor to coordinate communication between the two processors and the last pin is the reset pin which is the pin number 21 of the IC so to terminate the present activities of the microprocessor a high signal is applied to reset the input pin a presence of the high will force the microprocessor to stop all activities and set the major registers to the values shown in the table 9.3 table this table uh, the data in table 9.3 has certain implications in the allocations of the memory spaces to RAM and ROM that we will clarify next so whenever we will reset this chip or IC the CS register will be set by this value and the IP data segment register stack segment register and extra segment register will be cleared 